So the first rule that we really need to understand as we transition into changing our ideas about pain is that no pain, no gain no longer applies. It's really important, and especially in the United States, we've developed this method in this system that the more something hurts when it comes to therapy or rehab or self-care, the better it's going to be. And science right now has come out for the last four or five years with so many research studies that show gentle treatment and gentle therapy, gentle movement is just as effective as that old no pain, no gain model. So being able to help you understand that something doesn't have to hurt for you to get better is an important part of the process in your journey to really shifting the, your unique neural uh, tags and how your, how your brain is understanding pain. So let's look at some of the common pain practices right now that are still happening and they're really not working. So it's called the douse the fire method. So the idea that we can just kind of numb and mute out the signals as they're going uh, to the brain, it's just it's really not working. We have seen a 629% increase in epidural injections with back pain over the last 15 years. 629% increase in injections and people are reporting that they have the same if not more back pain now more than ever. We've seen a 423% increase for low back expenditures over the last five years. So this idea of dousing the fire, we can see 100% is not working. If in only five years, we've seen an increase of 400% of people uh, spending money on what they're doing on low back pain. And the truth is low back pain and all pain rates are increasing dramatically. 52,000 people die per year from medication overdoses of pain medications. That is a number that just totally blows my mind and I just can't even believe that we're still living in that state where we know that this is something that's going on. The amount of medications that people are taking to desperately try to get away from and resolve their pain is, is just, it's prolific and it's, it's crazy beyond anything that's imaginable. And 52,000 people a year die from medications. 48 million uh, inpatient surgeries per year. So every single year there's 48 million people who have some kind of a surgery where they stay in the hospital overnight at least one night. And then there's 53 million outpatient surgeries per year. Now if we have about 330 million people in our nation, one third of our population are having surgeries every single year. Those numbers are crazy and to have this experience and to see that the pain rates and the pain numbers and the pain expenditures are increasing by hundreds of percentage points, that is just absolutely crazy and we need to do something different. So what we're going to do right now is just take a, a minute to explain the difference between acute and chronic pain. So acute pain is classified as uh, pain that's been anywhere between hours to about three months of age. There's some kind of internal or external injury or damage. And typically, the acute system has a distinct warning and protective function that is still working properly. With a person that is experiencing chronic pain, the medical profession says those are people that are experiencing pain that's three months or longer. And that could be anywhere between years, decades, and multiple decades. The pain does not necessarily relate to any causative event whatsoever. As we talked about, a person can be having pain and have no trauma within the tissue. And the biggest thing with chronic pain is it is actually being labeled as a disease where it's actually changing the brain and the shape of your brain and how it's functioning. And ultimately, the brain has lost its protective and warning functions. So the pain that you're experiencing no longer actually applies to anything that's happening. So being able to understand the difference between where you're at in the cycle can have a huge important element in how you're going to treat the pain going forward. Another element that tissue ha people have is that they believe uh, their, their tissue healing times are, are shifted or altered. And the truth is that tissue healing times, uh, again, back to thinking that if you're in pain, your tissues aren't healing, is not necessarily true. 
The truth is by the time we get to the, the six to the nine month mark, almost all of the tissues have completely repaired and are back together and they've knitted themselves back together. The bones have grown back together. The muscles are back together. The fascia, any connective tissue that we're talking about has actually repaired itself and now it goes into the remodeling and the scarring stage. But people believe that the tissues are actually traumatized and they're still broken or they're torn apart and that's just not true. So our beliefs also increase our pain levels. And what a lot of people will believe is that they believe that all pain is bad. And the truth is that pain is not bad. Pain is an actual important vital function that we need to be able to protect ourselves. So if I'm walking and I step on something sharp, it lets me know that, oh my gosh, I just injured my foot. Now, a lot of people who are experiencing chronic pain or stress-related pain and, and chronic pain from that capacity, now the pain mechanism from a protective aspect is really not working appropriately, and so that can have a huge impact on, on how we are connecting to pain. And in our culture, we're so obsessed with taking pills and medication that instead of listening to the pain messages that we're getting, people just take tons of medications to shut off the pain signals, and we don't change our movement behavior, and that could also lead to further injury and trauma down the road because I'm no longer listening to our protective mechanisms, which is ultimately what pain is. Something else that can really increase our chronic, uh, our, our belief, uh, our experience with pain are failed treatments. When you go have an experience with a manual therapist or a chiropractor or your medical doctor, you've had a surgery and the pain and that doesn't work and you're still having chronic pain, that can significantly increase the story that your brain is writing and, and telling you about pain. And so failed treatments have a huge increase in people's chronic pain experiences. Um, and our beliefs increase our pain. Family stress, work stress, financial stress. Isn't it interesting how the, uh, some of the patients that we have, you know, they, they throw their back out once a year. And oftentimes that, ha that happens around holidays or during stressful time periods. Maybe your work is getting ready to do inventory and you're going to be working 15 hour days for the next week. All of a sudden that low back injury comes into play. So understanding that our beliefs and, and our thought patterns have a huge impact into what's going on with our chronic pain experiences. The other piece that can really skyrocket our chronic pain experience is when I see multiple doctors, even within the same profession, and I'm getting different uh, differences of opinions. I'm getting different perspectives. If I see one neurologist and he or she says, you have this and this, and I want to do the X treatment, and then you see neurologist uh, number two, and they say something completely different than the first one, that could put your brain into a state of panic and fear, and then that can increase increase your chronic pain experience as well. So different explanations and contradictory information is one of the leading causes of increased uh, pain experiences. And again, positive and ne negative experiences when you have a situation happen have a huge impact on your chronic pain experience. So if you, what, one of the research studies that have been published is that um, kids who play contact sports growing up actually have less chronic pain uh, compared to children who did not play cr uh, contact sports growing up by a difference of 30%. So that's a huge number. Um, if you're in a negative environment, you have seven to eight times uh, more likely chance to have chronic pain going forward. So this would be like an auto accident or if you're in a stressful situation that's, that's traumatizing. Um, some of our patients who unfortunately have been um, uh, uh, victims of violent assault uh, attacks, these can have a seven to eight times greater chance that you're going to experience chronic pain after that particular incident. And so another fascinating research study was uh, done with demolition derby drivers and then auto accident victims, where they looked at the average career span of a demolition driver was about 10 years. And in that 10 year time period, they had an average of 1,500 collisions, averaging about 40 miles an hour. And what they found out of those demolition derby drivers is that only about 10% of them had any kind of chronic neck pain issues. 
Now, when they compared that to a group of people who were in an auto accident one time, what they found was that the, the group of people that were in the auto accident one time at that same 40 mile per hour collision rate is that they had a 30% greater likelihood of having, having chronic pain after their incident. So the environment and your stress levels and whether it's a positive or negative environment can have a huge impact on that. So what that then can transition us into is called an, a, a fear avoidance pattern or fear avoidance belief. So fear is, des, uh, is defined as a distressing negative sensation induced by a perceived threat. So the perception of a trauma or the perception of a negative event can lead us into a fear pattern where now maybe when I went for a walk, I, got a, I was getting a catch in my hip or I was getting some kind of a pain. So then my brain says, oh my gosh, I'm not going to let you walk because you were having this, this traumatized situation and we're afraid that you're going to cause more trauma. And even though that it was a walk and nothing was happening within that hip, you get kicked in this fear, fear avoidance process. Then the next thing that happens is that fear increases our stress and our pain levels. So when people start experiencing stress, they start experiencing more pain, and all of these things just continue to ramp up and accelerate and go forward from there.